Okay, if I mark, <clears throat> excuse me, if I mark a sentence as rambling in your writing, I would bracket the entire sentence and write usually toward the end rambling. It's a pretty easy mark to see and understand. So look through your paper right now, see if you have any of those. If you don't have any of those, you might check your mugs checklist to see if you've committed the rambling sentence error in previous journal entries. Basically, Jordan's going to give us one example, but if we can look at other examples as well, that would be fantastic. So look through your papers for a moment and see what you can find. In order to understand a rambling sentence, we first must review what a run-on sentence is. Daniel, can you tell me what a run-on sentence is? A sentence that goes on without any comma or period. Uh, it's not the comma or period thing. You, you've got, you're, you're close to it, but you know what, Daniel, somebody made this mistake in fifth grade also. People th or students think that periods and commas will save you. Um, not necessarily, because we have the comma splice problem as well. There's something else that it's missing. Joining words, yes. Conjunctions or some sort of relative pronoun, something that joins. So a run-on sentence is multiple clauses. And Julianne, what's a clause? It's, um, yeah. it's like a part of a sentence that you were going to need a comma out of after. Uh, possibly, but uh, uh, let's, let's get to the point. A clause consists of two parts. What are they? Noun plus verb. There you go. <laughs> Multiple clauses, noun plus verb pair, incorrectly joined. And Daniel, that's why I said what I said about uh, commas and periods, because commas will not always join them correctly. But Heather's getting more to the point when she talks about conjunctions. <clears throat> she talks about conjunctions. We could talk about other sorts of pronouns, words like which or that also work, as do and. Um, so, because, when, and, thank you. So, those words will help join clauses together. <clears throat> I ask you to review this because the rambling sentence is an extraordinarily long sentence, but it's not a run-on. That's why it's called a rambling sentence. Multiple clauses, very long, very wordy, but it's correctly joined, so it's technically not a grammar error. It is a style error. You haven't violated the grammar rule, but it just doesn't flow very well. Jordan, let's see your example. Anybody else find rambling examples? You got one, Brendan? Excellent. Anyone else? Okay. So Brendan will look at uh, Jordan's and then you're next. Is yours in your journal entry essay? Cool. <laughs>
You'll be able to see it in a moment. Good. Um, set up a comma right there, please. Sure. Comma, please. There you go. One day, a little boy was drowning, so SpongeBob and I ran to the water, and when we got to him, SpongeBob got a cramp and started drowning. It might sound like a run-on, but technically, it's not. Kira, can you find a noun-verb pair in there for me, please? Yeah, boy was drowning. Good. That is correct. Alexa, can you find another? Uh, yes, where was that? It's actually SpongeBob and I ran, but you're, you're correct. So we've got a compound subject. Very good. Allie, can you find another? We got. Excellent. Uh, Jessica. Yep. And actually, Jessica, SpongeBob's doing two verbs, got and what's his other verb? Yes. Excellently done. Four clauses. If I have four clauses, how many joining words do I need? Hmm. Why is that? Let me give you the rule. It's time, time for a metaphor. You're absolutely correct, Heather. But it, it's time for a metaphor. Um, imagine an Oreo. Okay, you all seen an Oreo? Jordan, are you seeing an Oreo? Yeah, see it right there? How many sides does it have? Two. Excellent. How much filling does it have? One. Great. You want to join two sides of an Oreo, you need one squirt of filling, right? Let's say you had three sides of an Oreo. How many squirts of filling would you need? Two. Very good. If you had four, how many would you need? If you had five, how many would you need? Four. Excellent. So what's the rule? Um, well, Whatever your number is, minus one, minus. minus one. You see how that works? So with conjunctions and sentences, it works the same way. If you have two clauses, you need one conjunction. N, your number of clauses, minus one. If you have 17 clauses, how many joining words do you need? Speak. 16. It's always the number minus 1. So we should be looking for 4, or wait, wait 1, 2, 3, 4. We should be looking for 3 clause, or three um, conjunctions. Can somebody find them? Well, so is correct. Heather, find another one. I'm sorry? Yes, and is another one. The last one's a little bit harder to see because it's not in the place where you would expect it to be. Uh, nope. It's actually when. When joins this one and this one. So it says, when we got to him, SpongeBob got a cramp. It's showing how those two relate to each other. So the joining word is still there, it's just out of place a little bit. Mia? Yes, as an introductory element. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Nice pickup. Glad you've been focusing on that correctly joined. However, let me read the sentence for you again. One day a little boy was drowning, so SpongeBob and I ran to the water, and when we got to him, SpongeBob got a cramp and started drowning. It's like an entire story in one sentence. It's a story with a beginning, middle, and ending almost. It's got a conflict, it's got characterization, it even has a setting implied in one sentence. That's a rambling sentence. It's not a run-on, but it's just going for too long. Help Jordan out. Where should he split? Because that's the solution. Julianne. Um, one after um, ran to the water. I would agree. Let's see how it sounds there. One day, a little boy was drowning, so SpongeBob and I ran to the water. When we got to him, SpongeBob got a cramp and started drowning. Excellent. I think that works. The solution for a rambling sentence is to find the conjunction point, as Julianne did, and cut the sentence there. So she just removed to that conjunction, included a period, capitalize the W, and she's good to go. Question? Then it wouldn't be rambling. You don't need any. That's the point. Conjunctions join two or more um, things. So 
you don't need any conjunctions if you only have one clause. So your rule still holds, right? How many do you need? n minus 1. What's 1 minus 1? Correct. All right, we'll take a look at one more. And then uh, does anybody else have another error that they want to examine? Heather, what was yours? That one's easily done. Any others? No? Okay. Well, think about it. After we go through Brendan's, I'll open the floor to any other sorts of questions that you don't understand. Now, in storytelling, like Jordan's, you want to be careful to tell all moments of the story, which is why you don't want to try to include all moments of the story in one sentence. Jordan's, you're working on narrative, right? No. Oh, which one are you working on? Descriptive? Well, still, um, in descriptive, and that's what Brendan's working on, you want to make sure to describe every moment in detail. And if you crunch everything to one sentence, you're not going to be able to describe everything in one detail, or in uh, great detail. Brendan's doing the same thing. Brendan is defining juking as a move in lacrosse. And he wants to make sure that his audience can kind of see it, experience it. But the rambling sentence will prevent that from happening. Good. Oops. All right. Let's do the same thing. Um, Julianne, can you find a noun verb pair for me, please? That's my noun. What's my verb? Nope. It's the verb students don't want to see. No. Yes. Uh, let's see. Um, Dominic, can you find another one? Uh, let's see. Uh, cradle is actually one of two verbs. What's the other one? The, the two verbs together with the same subject. Who's doing the cradling? Hands don't cradle. Put your hands down. Dominic can do it. Give you a hint. It's over here somewhere. Who's cradling? You, right? But the you is actually doing two things, right? Switching and cradling. OK, so there's your, your clause. Switch and cradle. Uh, another one? Jay? What's someone doing? Second guess, yes. So actually, we could see second guess as one verb. Can we find another one? Yes. You make. Can we find another one? That's a helping verb. Very good. Juking is, you switch cradle, you make, someone second guess, you are going. So we've kind of plotted the, the, the clauses there. Somebody tell me where Brendan will split this apart. Jordan, where should he split it? Juking is when you switch hands and cradle your lacrosse stick with the other hand. Also, when you make someone second guess the direct, which direction you are going. Um, that's good. Requires a little rewriting because now the second sentence is a fragment. Mia, you had a question? Or did you want to fix it? That is true. However, we're going to have to rewrite this. Um, because also when you make someone second guess which direction you are going, it's not a complete sentence. It's a fragment. Yeah, yeah you, could, you could do that. Heather, the only danger of that, what, what problem have you run into now? Yeah. Juking is when you switch hands and cradle your lacrosse stick with the other hand. Juking is also when you make someone second guess which direction you are going. Can somebody help Heather eliminate the redundancy? Thank you. 
it is also when you make someone second guess which direction you are going. You could rewrite to say something like you could also use juking to make someone second guess where you are, um, where you are going. Either of those works fine. But good, Heather, Mia, thank you very much. Any questions about the rambling sentence issue? <laughs>